In this video, you're going to learn how to apply all the derivative rules you know, such as power rule, constant multiple rule, uh, sum and difference rules, chain rule, product rule, quotient rule. You're going to learn how to apply all of those rules uh, when dealing with trig functions. So we're going to find the derivatives of trig functions in this video. Let's start off by looking at, first of all, what are we going to need to know to be able to do the derivatives of trig functions. We're going to need to know the derivatives of the three primary trig functions first. So you're going to need to know what are the derivatives with respect to x of sine x, cos x, and tan x. So I'll write those down here. So the derivative with respect to x of sine x is simply cos x. The derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And the derivative of tan x is secant squared of x. So we'll need these three derivatives um, and all of your previous knowledge about derivative rules. So if you don't know the previous derivative rules, make sure you go back and watch my previous videos where you learn all about chain rule, product rule, all that good stuff. So we're going to combine our knowledge of all those rules with these new rules to find the derivatives of trig functions. So let's start off with a couple easy ones. So every example we do, we're just finding the derivative with respect to x for these functions. So our first function is y equals 4 multiplied by sine x. Well, the constant multiple rule of derivatives tells me if I want the derivative of a constant multiplied by a function, the derivative is equal to that constant multiple multiplied by the derivative of the function. So if I want the derivative of 4 times sine x, it's equal to 4 times the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. Number two, the derivative of a difference of two things. When we're doing that, it's just the derivative is equal to the derivative of each of those two functions. Uh, subtracted from each other. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then I need to subtract the derivative of 3 cos x, which would be 3 times negative sine x. Right? Derivative of cos is negative sine. And then always simplify if you can. So I've got a negative 3 times a negative sine x. That's positive 3 sine x. So there's a couple easy ones to start you off. And if these uh, derivative rules, like the power rule I used here, right, bringing the exponent down, subtracting one from the exponent, if you don't know these rules, make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. Now, what if the argument of the trig function uh, is a function itself that can be differentiated? So what if I'm doing the derivative of sine of f at x? So we're going to need the chain rule here. So you'll differentiate the outside function with respect to the inside function. That means take the derivative of sine, but leave the argument the same, so it becomes cos of whatever f at x is. But chain rule then tells us we need to multiply this by the derivative of the inside functions. We'd multiply this by f prime of x. So <clears throat> let's try a few harder examples, examples where we'll need chain rule. Like this one here. What if we want the derivative of sine of 4x? So we differentiate sine with respect to 4x, and it just becomes cos of 4x. But then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of 4x, right? Multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, and the derivative of the inside function is 4. So I could write this as 4 times cos of 4x. And make sure you understand that cos of 4x, that whole thing is being multiplied by 4. Don't try and multiply the 4 into the argument. You're not allowed to do that. The 4 goes in front. The whole cos of 4x is being multiplied by 4. Number two, let's differentiate this one. This one I'm going to need a little bit more room, I think. So, oh, actually, I'm going to rewrite this function in a different notation first before I do derivative. So this function, cos squared x, make sure you understand what this means. It doesn't mean cos of x squared, right? It doesn't mean cos of x times x. If it meant that, you would see it looking like that with the squared in there. That's not what we have. We have a cos squared x. What does that mean? That means cos x times cos x. Right? So it would make sense if we wrote it like this. This means a cos x times cos x. It's just this is the you know, commonly accepted notation for expressing a cos x times a cos x. That's so we don't get confused and think that the squared is only on the argument. And this sine squared x means sine x times sine x. So I'll write that as sine x squared. So you don't have to write it like this, it's just I think this sometimes helps you that we're now going to be using chain rule. So if I want to differentiate this, 
uh, when the base of your power is a function itself, uh, you differentiate the power with respect to the inside functions. You keep the base the same, right? Bring the exponent down, becomes two. Leave the base of the power the same and subtract one from the exponent. So just change it to a one. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of the base of the power. So the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And now I subtract and do the derivative of this the exact same way. Bring the exponent down, leave the base exactly as it is, reduce the exponent by 1, and multiply that by de the derivative of the base of the power. So notice we're using chain rule here. And then simplify this if you can. I mean, the only real thing I'm going to simplify here, um, I've got a 2 times a negative 1, so right, that's negative 2, and I have a cos x and sin x. I'm going to write the sin x first, just uh, you'll see why I do that in a second. Notice I have two like terms here. They're both sine x cos x's, so I can just subtract the coefficients, right? Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, so I've got negative 4 sine x cos x. And, I mean, that's an accepted final answer, but you might notice that here uh, there is a double angle identity hidden in here, right? Negative 4, you can think of that as negative 2 times 2 sine x cos x. So here what we have, this 2 sine x cos x, that's the double angle identity of sine of 2x. So I could rewrite this as negative 2 sine of 2x. So that's the derivative of the original function. Let's try just a couple more. y equals negative x squared times sine of 3x minus pi. Okay, I'm going to need product rule here, right? I'm doing this multiplied by this. So I'm going to have to use product rule. Product rule is derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. Uh, finding the derivative of negative x squared is fine. Just use your power rule. But finding the derivative of sine of 3x minus pi, well, that you're also going to need chain rule here. So here we have a product rule and a chain rule. So let's start. So the derivative equals derivative of the first, so that's negative 2x, times the second function, so just multiply that by sine of 3x minus pi, plus, now we do the derivative of the second function, which I'll need chain rule for, it becomes cos of 3x minus pi, right, leave the inner function, but then chain rule tells us that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3, right? The derivative of 3x minus pi is just 3 because the derivative of 3x is 3 and the derivative of pi is 0 because pi is a constant and the derivative of any constant is 0. Okay, so that's just the derivative of this. That product rule tells us that derivative has to be multiplied by the first function, has to be multiplied by negative x squared. And then we go ahead and simplify this up if we can. Uh, this, first, this first term, nothing can simplify here. So I've got negative 2x sine of 3x minus pi. And then I have plus uh, 3 times negative x squared. Well, that's negative 3x squared multiplied by this cosine function, cos 3x minus pi. And I think that's good. They're not like terms, right? Because this is an x, this is an x squared. I mean, I could common factor out an x, but I don't think we need to bother doing that. So there's the equation of our derivative. Okay, so here's our fourth example. We want to find the derivative of sine squared of cos x. So what does that mean? That means sine of cos x times sine of cos x. So I'll just rewrite it as sine of cos x all squared. So for this function, I'm going to have to differentiate the outside function with respect to the inside function. So that means uh, bring the 2 down, leave the inside function exactly as it is, and reduce the exponent by 1. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. But now keep in mind, the derivative of this inside function, I'll need chain rule 4 as well. So the derivative of sine of cos x would equal... Oops, I'll change back to yellow, would equal cosine of cos x, right? Differentiate the outside function with respect to the inside function, right? Leave the inside function exactly the same, but differentiate sine, it becomes cos. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So what is the derivative of cos x? It's negative sine x. And then we'll simplify this if we can. 
I've got a 2 times a negative sine x. I could write that as negative 2 sine x. And that's being multiplied by a sine of cos x. And a cos of cos x. And there we go. There's the derivative. And one more. Last one. Tan x plus cos x squared. Uh, this one's our first time where we're differentiating a function with tan. Oh, I should call this something. I'll call it y equals. Okay, so y prime equals differentiate the outside with respect to the inside. That means leave the inside function exactly the same, but use your power rule. Change the exponent to 1. And that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And the inside function is the sum of two things. So my derivative, I'm going to have to differentiate both of them and add them together. So the derivative of tan x is secant squared x plus the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So I've got plus a minus. So I'll just write that as minus sine x. And we won't bother expanding that. That's fully factored form. That's an acceptable version of, um, of your derivative. OK, so I hope those, hope those rules helped. Uh, these, are, these types of derivatives are something you really have to practice. So make sure you do uh, go to jensenmath.ca, find the accompanying practice questions, and uh, I hope you do well.